Every year, usually during our graduation ceremonies, UBC has the honor of bestowing honorary degrees upon individuals who, in the opinion of the university community, have fit the criteria of excellence and eminence in their chosen field. Ian Wishaw exemplifies these characteristics, and it is our pleasure to grant him an honorary degree. Professor Ian Wishaw is one of Canada's most cited neuroscientists, whose research addresses the neural basis of skilled movement and of brain disease. He received his PhD from Western University and subsequently moved to the University of Lethbridge, where he is currently a professor of psychology and neuroscience and holds a Board of Governors Chair in Neuroscience. A prolific researcher, he is the author of over 450 scientific papers and five books on neuroscience subjects that include a wide range of mammalian species. He's had visiting appointments at the University of Texas, the University of Michigan, the University of Cambridge, and the University of Strasbourg. Professor Wishaw is a fellow of the Canadian Psychological Association, the American Psychological Association, the Royal Society of Canada, and Clare Hall at Cambridge. He's also a recipient of the University of Lethbridge's Ingrid Speaker Medal for Research and Alberta Science and Technology's 2009 Outstanding Leader in Alberta Science Award. His record of achievement has been further recognized through honorary degrees from Thompson Rivers University and the University of Lethbridge. In recognition of his prolific research and contributions within wide-ranging fields of the neurosciences, we are pleased to confer the degree of Doctor of Science honoris causa upon Ian Q. Wishaw. It now gives me great pleasure to ask Dr. Wishaw to say a few words. Chancellor and uh, members of the Senate and members of the university and Mr. President. Uh, this is the family honor, and I'd like to tell you why. I grew up just down the road from here on Kootenai Lake, probably the most beautiful spot on earth next to uh, your site here. And I went to uh, junior high school at University Hill School on the University of British Columbia camp campus. And I, the campus was my paper route. And my parents wanted me to go to UBC. And when I graduated from high school, I wasn't having any of that. So I'm sure now they'll be both surprised and delighted, just as uh, the family members of those who are graduating today with me will be uh, surprised and delighted. Well, the, Mr. President, you've given me uh, five minutes to say a few words to the, my fellow graduates. And so I want to tell, tell them the story of my life in that five minutes. Uh, when I started grade one, I couldn't read. Not surprising. When I started grade two, I couldn't read. Or grade three the first time, or the second time. And by the time I got to grade four, my special ed teachers were telling my parents, I don't think your son is ever going to learn to read. And when I got to grade five one day, I saw a book in our house and it had a picture of a caribou on the dust cover. And I picked it up and looked at it. And I got the idea that if I pretended to read that book, uh, people would quit bugging me about not being able to read. So I opened the book up and started at the beginning of it. And I would point at the words and mumble to myself and make sure everybody was watching me doing this. And I think after a while, they, they kind of got bored with it all and didn't pay much attention to me. But somehow in that process, those words started speaking to me. And I ended up reading that entire book. And I was a pretty good reader by the time I finished. Now, it turns out, and I didn't know this at the time, at the time I was reading that book, so was the Parliament of Canada. And they condemned the book. And the 
famous company, the Hudson's Bay Company, was suing the author of the book. Uh, the book, of course, was uh, The People of the Deer, and the author was Farley Mowat. And many years later, when I got to work with Farley, I was able to tell him this story and uh, able to get him to sign that book, which I still have to this day. Well, uh, reading is an interesting phenomena. It's probably the most studied phenomena in psychology. And it's one of which we have absolutely no idea how the brain does that. It's one of the big unknowns. So if anybody's looking for a great challenge out there, uh, go with reading. Uh, I loved reading after I, I learned to read and I majored in English uh, and graduated with a degree in English from university. And uh, just before I graduated, I had to get a form signed by the dean and I went to the dean's office and he signed the form and he said, well, what are you gonna do now that you're graduated? And I had no idea. I suppose my father had said to me so often, you're never gonna get a job with a degree in English that I just never thought of uh, ever having a job. And uh, then he said, well, your marks aren't too bad. You could go to graduate school. Uh, and I said, graduate school, what's graduate school? And he said, well, you just keep going to school. And I said, in anything? And he said, yeah, in anything. And I, when I left his office, I thought, you know, that's for me, I'll just keep going to school but maybe I should do something a little different. And I thought, well, there's biology. That's pretty interesting. Uh, the high school I went to wasn't allowed to teach biology. The Bishop of Vancouver said it was uh, not the sort of thing young men should learn or young women either, I guess. And uh, so that was a possibility. And another possibility was psychology. I mean, I didn't know what it was. I'd looked the word up. It's the study of the breath and how hard could that be? So I flipped a coin and it came up psychology. And I went to the psychology department and the man behind the desk turned out to be the chairman. And I said, I wanna be a graduate student in psychology, sir. And he said, we're always looking for students. So I knew I'd come to the right place. And he said, you need a B plus average. And I said, I think I got that. He says, okay, well fill out these forms. So I filled out the forms <clears throat> and then they assigned me to work with uh, Rod Cooper when I was accepted. And Rod Cooper studied the brain. And that's how I came to study the brain. And my lack of science background and my lack of a psychology, psychology background never came back to haunt me till I got a job teaching psychology. And they handed me a large book called Introduction to Psychology. And when I looked in it, the part in the brain was a tiny little chapter at the very end. And the rest was complete Greek to me. So uh, every night I would sit up late and try to prepare a class for these poor students and it was ugly. And uh, somehow I'm grateful to those students for suffering through it because we both learned some psychology at the end. Now, I suppose I should draw a lesson from this and I've been thinking for a long time, you know, what the lesson could be. Uh, how does an English degree train you for uh, for a career in science, a career in neuroscience is where I work in biology and chemistry and physics and all these different sciences. And uh, I think the answer is pretty simple. 90% of what a scientist does is reading and writing. And most of the other 10% is teaching other people, students and postdocs to read and write. And just a tiny little bit of the job involves getting you know, a dish and mixing up a chemical and cooking it and doing that kind of sciencey stuff. So uh, I can, I want to tell you from personal experience that if you've had a liberal education here, and I'm sure many of you have, never be ashamed of it. It will stand you in good stead, even though you might not know how it will do that. Thank you.